Over the past few years, new large scale roller coasters have been popping up everywhere. Universal Studios opened Hagrid's Magical Creature Motorbike Adventure and Velocicoaster, Disney World opened Guardians of the Galaxy Cosmic Rewind and SeaWorld Orlando Icebreaker. However, none of these are as intimidating, thrilling or record breaking as Busch Gardens Tampa's new ride, Iron Gwazi. Busch Gardens in Tampa Bay, Florida has always been the roller coaster capital of Florida. Rides like Kumba and Montu placed the park on the map in the 1990s, while Shikra and Cheetah Hunt continued to build on that momentum during the 2000s and early 2010s. And most recently, well, nothing. Busch Gardens needed something new, something exciting to maintain their prowess. Fortunately, they had the perfect spot, the land occupied by their former roller coaster, Gwazi. Now to pick a ride. Hmm, how about a 206 foot, 63 meter tall monster of a roller coaster featuring a maximum vertical drop angle of 91 degrees and a top speed of 76 miles per hour, 122 kilometers per hour. Yeah, that'll do the job. Iron Gwazi packs a punch with its outer banked airtime hills, its tight overbanked turns and its insane barrel roll drop, nicknamed the death roll. You can see why Iron Gwazi quickly became the new flagship roller coaster of the park. But how? What is Iron Gwazi and where did the idea come from? Busch Gardens Tampa opened on the 1st of June 1959. Well, kind of. It wasn't really a theme park, nor did it have any roller coasters. It was a brewery, a brewery with a bird garden. The American brewing company Anheuser-Busch, the people that own Budweiser, were hoping to sell their beers all over the United States. As demand increased, they needed a new brewery. So in July of 1957, they set to work building a $20 million facility in Tampa, Florida. Manufacturing the beer began in March, and a few months later, in June, the brewery opened for tours. It was clearly a success because just over a month later, the company announced a 5 million US dollars expansion for the site. Simply put, they began to build an ever increasing number of attractions for visitors. Theme lands opened up featuring animals from various geographical areas. Then, a monorail taking guests on a scenic tour of the African themed area of the park. By this point in time, it was clear to Anheuser-Busch that this brewery was a bit more than just a brewery. The development of the nearby Walt Disney World, which opened in 1971, meant even more investment. The park added a log flume ride in 1973, Stanley Falls Flume, a big looping roller coaster, Python, in 1976, then another one, Scorpion, in 1980. Roller coasters were obviously working out for Busch Gardens because they continued to build more of them. In 1993, they debuted Kumba, an innovative new ride built by the up-and-coming roller coaster company Bolliger and Mabillard. The ride featured record-breaking and world-first elements. It opened with the world's tallest loop, the world's first dive loop, and the world's first pair of interlocking corkscrews, images of which have been plastered all over the internet. Then, just three years later, they built another one, a second innovative ride by Bolliger and Mabillard, Montu. Montu became the world's tallest, fastest, and longest inverted roller coaster, a type of ride which places guests below the track. Although, between these two huge additions, the Anheuser-Busch company came to the realization that perhaps beer wasn't the main selling point of their Tampa location. Who would have guessed? So, after 36 years, the brewery closed down and the land was handed over to the park. With all sites turned to the theme park, Busch Gardens needed to continue their trend of building new roller coasters. However, by the late 1990s, they weren't just competing against themselves. No, they had multiple Disney World theme parks to contend with and the brand new Islands of Adventure Park over at Universal Studios. Speaking of which, I'm currently planning a trip to Orlando. I last visited Disney World over 15 years ago and have never been to Universal, so it's time I do a big trip. Being a theme park nerd, I spent a lot of time researching deals, even comparing ticket and hotel prices in the UK, where I'm from, and the US. To do that, you need a VPN, which is great because this video is sponsored by ExpressVPN. 
Using ExpressVPN, I've discovered that on the US Disney World site, I can stay at Disney's Art of Animation Resort for half the price compared with the UK site, or even stay at Disney's Caribbean Beach Resort, which isn't on the UK Disney World site at all. ExpressVPN also stops your internet service provider from seeing your activity online by rerouting it through their secure encrypted servers, meaning they won't be able to laugh at my Disney-related search history. They have 24-7 support, they're rated the best VPN provider by CNET, The Verge and TechRater, and it's super easy to use. And this is all great news for me because when I get to Disney World and feel a bit homesick, I'll be able to change my online location back to the UK to access UK-only streaming sites and continue watching all of my favourite shows. Essentially, if you need a VPN, ExpressVPN is the way forward. If you click the link in the description to sign up today, you can get three months free. That's three months of guilt-free Orlando trip Googling. Feels good, right? All right, back on track. So there were lots of new theme parks popping up in Orlando and Busch Gardens had to stand out. Their new ride needed to be big and unique. At the time, interest in older styled wooden roller coasters was starting to pick up. In an excuse to ride some roller coasters and to see what's out there, Vice President of Planning and Design for Busch Gardens Tampa, Mark Rose, visited 17 different theme parks in 17 days. He narrowed the project down to five different styled rides. One of these was a ride built by Great Coasters International, known as GCI, a brand new company designing unique wooden roller coasters. GCI's rides featured condensed twister layouts. These were different to the expansive, out-and-back style layouts found on many of the world's more traditional wooden rides. More members of the theme park's management rode all five of the competing roller coasters, including GCI's first ever roller coaster, Wildcat. Shortly after, it was all settled. GCI would construct Busch Gardens Tampa's new ride. A wooden roller coaster at a major Floridian theme park was a unique selling point, but it wasn't quite enough. What's better than one new roller coaster, Busch Gardens thought to themselves? Two new roller coasters. The park set out to build a pair of dueling wooden roller coasters, a first for GCI. The two rides would race each other as they snake around the mess of wooden track, whilst also providing a higher capacity attraction for the park's ever-increasing visitor numbers. During the summer season of 1998, Busch Gardens Tampa told the masses, Attention warrior, they're coming. One is powerful with superior strength, while the other is cunning with unmatched speed. Both are locked in an intense battle over a territory neither one can ever share and neither one can ever leave. A drum summons the bravest warriors as these two forces prepare to bring their intense battle to Bush Gardens Tampa Bay. This leads nicely into the ride's name, Gwazi, a fictional creature described to have the body of a lion with the head of a tiger. Therefore, the ride's two sides became known as those two animals. One side portrayed the strength of the lion, and the other, the speed of the tiger. After months of construction, Gwazi opened to much fanfare on the 18th of June, 1999. Many riders commented on its relentless nature, citing it to be one of the world's best roller coasters. This was despite the ride's more modest stats. 105 feet, 32 meters high, and a top speed of 51 miles per hour, 82 kilometers per hour. Fortunately, Guaz's dueling nature, which saw the trains interact six times, bolstered the experience. Plus, the lower height requirement compared to Busch Gardens' previous roller coasters also meant more could ride it. 10 million US dollars, very well spent. Yeah, so that 10 million dollars was well spent, uh, initially. The thing is, wooden roller coasters age. Thousands of trains hurtling around the track each year caused Guazi to become uncomfortable. Its smoothness deteriorated, and with it, so did the number of people willing to ride. Fortunately, there was a solution. A retrack. Remove parts of the ride's wooden track and replace it with new track. Simple. In 2009, Guazi's lion side saw large track overhauls, which was followed by the tiger side a year later. If that wasn't enough, the park had another thing up their sleeve. Back when they were searching for their new roller coaster, GCI were a young company. They began building wooden roller coasters, but hadn't started making their own roller coaster trains yet. Instead, they used trains manufactured by another company, Philadelphia Toboggan Coasters, known as PTC. PTC's trains are big, bulky things, 
the exact thing you might picture when you hear wooden roller coasters. However, GCI were in the process of creating their own train, one which was new and exciting. It featured singular rows, as opposed to boxy cars, which could all turn independently. GCI claimed this made the experience smoother by reducing wear and tear on the ride's track. This radical design was dubbed the Millennium Flyer Train because, well, it debuted around the Millennium. Busch Gardens Tampa initially opted not to use GCI's new train, stating the unpredictable nature of unproven technology. In hindsight, not the best move. Fast forward just over a decade, and countless roller coasters built by GCI had featured their new Millennium Flyer train to much success. Busch Gardens therefore saw this as an opportunity to enhance their ride. They bought four Millennium Flyer trains, modified technical aspects of the ride to make them compatible, and on the 22nd of July 2011, the all-new Guazi opened to the public. The initial report? Guazi is back and better than ever. Phew, 10 million US dollars, uh, plus a bit more extra for the trains, well spent. Or was it? Just a few years later, Guazi quickly returned to its unpleasant state. Wood just doesn't really go well with the hot and humid Floridian weather. As ridership continued to plummet, Busch Gardens took drastic action. They closed Guazi's Tiger side only a single year after it had received the new trains. Then in 2015, the park gave up entirely. After citing low ridership and increasing maintenance costs, they closed the Lion Side 2, marking the end of Guazi. At the time of closing, park president Jim Dean stated, no decisions have been made about what lies ahead for Guazi or for the future plans of that area of Bush Gardens. Pretty ambiguous, Jim. Pretty ambiguous. Before anyone could shed a tear for the end of Guazi, the park nerds were already gossiping about what's going to happen next. They went ballistic. Ballistic in the hopes that Guazi would be updated and improved by another emerging roller coaster company, Rocky Mad Construction, known as RMC. Over the few years prior, RMC had begun to build a reputation for taking tired wooden roller coasters and making them more thrilling. In 2011, they first modified the Texas Giant, a once popular wooden roller coaster had six flags over Texas. The new Texas Giant, as it's now called, saw all new steel roller coaster track placed where the old wooden track once lay. Parts of the ride's structure remained the same, but the layout was exaggerated, becoming taller, faster, and more intense. Since then, RMC have made their hybrid wood and steel rides bigger than ever. Many of their roller coasters quickly gained critical acclaim too. This peaked in 2018 with the debut of Steel Vengeance, a new RMC roller coaster at Cedar Point. Not only was Steel Vengeance a hybrid coaster, it was a hyper hybrid. The ride stands 205 feet, 62 meters tall, making it taller, faster, and longer than RMC's other attractions. This pushed theme park nerds over the edge. They craved a hybrid version of Guazi a new ride on the same level as Cedar Point's Steel Vengeance. Then, suddenly in early 2018, they spotted three trademark names, Twisted Tiger, Uproar, and Tigris. The nerds lost control. Twisted could already be found in the name of three RMC rides, leading them to think, this is it, the time has come. Alas, the time hadn't come. Well, yes, of course it did all happen eventually, but that's rushing the story. Later, Busch Gardens Tampa revealed Tigris, an all-new, triple-launching steel roller coaster. The nerds were devastated, but hope was on the horizon. The park also had a second announcement. A new thrilling ride is coming to Guaz's area in 2020. Under the surface, another trademark too, this time for the name Iron Guazi. Similar to Twisted, Iron had been added to the name of a previous ride RMC had converted, this must be it, Guazi is returning bigger, better, and more brilliant than before. In September of 2019, Busch Gardens Tampa announced that RMC would be brought in to reimagine Guazi. Iron Guazi would become the tallest hybrid coaster in North America, standing a colossal 206 feet, 63 meters tall. That's a whole foot taller than Steel Vengeance for those keeping score. Not only that, Iron Guazi would become the fastest, 
and steepest hybrid roller coaster in the world, featuring a top speed of 76 miles per hour, 122 kilometers per hour, and a maximum drop angle of 91 degrees. But not only that again, instead of a lion and a tiger, the whole ride would be themed to a new, single animal. Of course, the choice of animal was obvious. How could you not guess this correctly? It's a crocodile. What? From the bones of the original Guazi, a new legend rises, reaching taller heights and faster speeds, delivering the next thrills that our coaster fans crave and expect from Busch Gardens. The park president, Stuart Clark, said that. An intellectual might believe that the evolution of Guazi to become, yet again, a world-beating roller coaster is paralleled in the evolution of a crocodile over millions of years to become the top predator. Or, a crocodile might just look cool on the front of the train. I mean, we'll never really know. Initially, the park had earmarked 2020 for Iron Guazi's debut. As construction progressed, an ever-increasing portion of Guazi's original structure was removed. The ride's designer, Alan Schilke, combined various aspects of the two dueling tracks, sometimes traveling in the opposite direction than originally intended. Roughly 40% of Guazi's structure was reused, 25% of the wooden supports, and 75% of the ride's initial foundations. To gain enough height, the placement of the lift hill had to be adjusted compared to the original Lion and Tiger tracks too. The final result? A completely new experience, more thrilling than ever before. This new experience did not open in 2020, however. We all know why that is. Throughout the pandemic, Busch Gardens Tampa was forced to temporarily shut down. Once the park could reopen, the decision was made to wait until the global situation was better before unleashing Iron Guazi upon the masses. The new anticipated opening was Spring 2021, which came and went. Finally, at the beginning of 2022, it was announced that Iron Guazi would open in March, with pass holders getting the opportunity to ride early in February. And it did open! The theme park nerds rejoiced as they could finally experience RMC's latest creation. The initial feedback was loud and clear. Iron Guazi was a force to be reckoned with. The height, the speed, the length has quickly helped Iron Guazi become Busch Gardens' flagship ride and one of the best roller coasters in the world. Cool. Sounds neat. But why? What makes this ride special? Well, let's imagine you're there in front of Iron Guazi. You enter the queue line, a repurposed version of the original Guazi queue. You see informative signs about crocodiles and hear a soundtrack created just for the ride. The line weaves its way into what used to be the station for Tiger. You cross the old track and enter the new station. There, you find yourself in one of 12 air gates. A crocodile themed train, which seats 24 riders, arranged in rows of two, rolls in. You board, fasten your seatbelt, and pull down your hydraulic lap bar. The ride has begun. You immediately turn left out of the station, navigate a small dip, and enter Iron Guazi's lift hill. Now for the climb. You slowly ascend 206 feet, 63 meters above the ground, gaining a unique perspective of other rides at the park. As you crest the top, the beyond vertical drop beneath is very slowly revealed. At this point, you plummet through another part of the ride support structure and quickly reach the top speed of 76 miles per hour, 122 kilometers per hour. You then climb into a large outer banked airtime hill. With little time to breathe, this is immediately followed by the elements nicknamed the Death Roll. You ascend into the sky and begin rotating counterclockwise. You then whipped underneath the ride's lift hill through a 540 degree roll which barrels towards the ground. A snappy overmount turn to the left follows which leads to a wave turn behind the station's building. You climb into a wall stool before being flipped upside down into a zero G stool high above the ground. Your high speed ride continues with a twisted step up, two small airtime hills, a sweeping turn, another airtime hill and a final dive towards the ground. At this point, you smash it to the final brake run, marking the end of your experience. Throughout your ride, you've traveled over 4,075 feet, 1,242 meters of track. Most of this takes place within 50 seconds of actual ride time, measured from the top of the lift hill to the final brakes. Over two decades ago, the original Guazi stood out amongst the busy Floridian crowd. Today, Iron Guazi achieves the same. The ride has become an icon for Busch Gardens Tampa and the gold standard for roller coasters not only in Florida but across the world. It's hard to believe that a brewery, 
a brewery with a bird garden would lead to this. A theme park is never finished, however. New rides are constantly opening across Florida rides better than the last. It's only a matter of time until Busch Gardens Tampa constructs another world-class ride, another Iron Gwazi. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you all next time.